Okay, we're back. I am decided that I should take this tail block out and show you some detail on the tail block. It will also give you an idea as to what's inside all of these little motor bearing mounts. Uh, they all mount up in a similar sort of fashion, however the bearing mounts obviously have bearings inside them. Same with the uh, tail spindle drive. Uh, so. You'll get, the sim you'll get the idea of to how that it all goes together and how it all works, so if you ever have to replace them, you know what you're expecting. Alright, you get your tail block. And when you receive your tail block, as you see, some of these little three pins here seem to be stuck in. Oh no, that one wasn't. Neither is that one. But this one here won't come out. If you look at it, you've got these little holes. And now, try and get a close up. But this camera doesn't seem to be very nice to me today. But basically, in these little holes right here, these ones, they're hexagon shaped. And into them goes these little hexagon shaped pieces of plastic. They've got a hole drilled straight through the center of them. And that's what your self tapping screws go into. Now, one thing of note. I was on the forums yesterday, I think it was, when I first saw it, and a guy was saying that the Hobby King uh, tail boom was too long and he couldn't get it in. Now what that probably is, is this little mounting lug here. You can see this, I'm pushing on it, and I can't quite get through it because it's a little lug there. And that's your locating lug, which goes into this little slot here that you can see and that allows the lug to slide up and down the tail boom and that's how you get your tension the lug also stops it from rotating sideways like that and around that keeps your tail boom aligned and so that your tail box always perpendicular to the main shaft of the helicopter that is a very important thing if you do not have your tail spindle perpendicular to your main shaft then you can run into trouble but each time you get a little bit of yaw it can either push the tail up or down and gives you essentially elevator and aileron mixed in with your tail which is a very bad thing so be very careful of that now when you assemble your little tail block you grab all these little pieces of plastic and you slide them in like so Okay, now this is an aligned tower block and you can sort of somewhat see a line written on there. As I said, this camera isn't being very nice to me. It seems as though the uh, 10 megapixels that it's rated at is not very good. So I might have to try and look into getting a new video camera soon. Uh, try and get some better quality videos for everybody. So you get them and you slide it all together it should just slip in. Now when you have this and you put it into your helicopter this little locating lug that I was talking about, you can sort of see it there on the left hand side at the back. That is very important that it goes in as you look at the top frame of your helicopter that the locating lug goes in on the left hand side of the, of the mounting block closest to the main shaft because it is offset, it's only at one end if you have it flicked around the other way and you have that low cutting lug at this end of the tail block you will not be able to get your tail boom in far enough so make sure it is closest to the main shaft and on the left hand side looking at it from the rear you just grab your main frame put it in at the top, grab your main frame spread them apart a little bit and slide it down and clip it in now if you are using an aligned tail block rather than the cloned ones, the cloned ones do not have a line written on it. If you are using a name brand block like this line one, it does have a line and it will read a line left to right, right way up when you look at it. If you look at that, see you can see a line written across it, it's right way up and that's the way that you can check to make sure that everything works and everything is good. However, on the clone ones, it's not an issue. Just make sure you put your tail block in in the right place. Okay, next step. 
you grab these little screws. They're a self-tapping screw. I'll just move my camera. They're a self-tapping screw. They're a hex drive, which again you can't see it. And they've got a little cup on them, a little washer cup. Make sure you use those washer cups, it increases looks and also increases performance a bit by giving a greater surface area of bite onto the mainframe. It also prevents damage to your mainframes when you pull them in and out regularly. So grab your one and a half mil driver and your screw and screw it in. Not all the way. You want to leave about a 1.5 millimeter gap, one and a half millimeter gap between the bottom of that washer to the frame. You will see why soon. So I'll just go through, I'll do all of this, and then I'll come back.